episode 54 of Let's Hear It. Today's guest is Rubens de la Corte, grew up playing guitar in Brazil, eventually made his way to the Berklee College of Music in Boston, and currently living in Brooklyn. He's played with people like Angelique Kijo, Babel Gilberto, Ileana Elias, many more. And he's currently getting a PhD in ethnomusicology, which he'll tell us a little bit about. He's going to come on and show us a Spanish guitar, also known as a classical guitar. And his is made by Camps, C-A-M-P-S, in Spain. And so let's say hello to Rubens. Hello, Gary. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Nice to see you. The hair's looking solid. Glasses look good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Your pandemic look. Yes, yes, we have to, uh, you know, have to adapt to a pandemic look. <laughs> I wanted to bring you on because you're an excellent guitar player, but I also, you know, I did a little touring with you a few years back uh, when you were playing guitar with Pabell Gilberto, and I mm -hmm. just loved hearing you play, and I wanted to hear some stories, and um, excited to see this Camps guitar, is that what you call it? Yeah, 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 wow, well, my pleasure, Gary. Yeah, this is a, this is a Camps guitar. It's a Camps uh, CL20, that's the, the, the model. Uh, Camps is actually a very small um, guitar factory in Catalonia, in Spain, in Banyolas, which is like a, a town just like a, outside of Barcelona. Uh, so although it's a factory, it's, uh, the production is like, not, it's not a large scale production. So they, they, they make, um, guitars uh, uh, with, a, with a lot of care, a lot of, uh, and a lot of characteristic, you know, a lot of character and uh, um, sounds great. Mm. So when did you get this Camps guitar? I got this Camps guitar in Barcelona. Uh, my old, older brother lives in Barcelona, so uh, every time I have a chance, if I'm touring or if I have time off, um, I, I visit my brother and um, in one of those visits, uh, 2010, I think, 2009, 2010, um, I, um, I went to Casa Luthier, which is a, a renowned music store, guitar uh, store in, in Barcelona. And, um, and I tried several guitars. I tried uh, 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 guitars made by, by Luthers, like, you know, really expensive guitars. Uh, and I tried some factory guitars. And... I um I really fell in love with this Camps guitar because um it was so easy to play. Uh one of the problems when you get like a high-end guitar made by a luthier if uh, if it wasn't really made specially for you and in your specifications and your measurements you know they are actually hard to play, you know. So although they are quite expensive, uh, some of them are 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 difficult to play. And uh, that was one of the reasons why I got this Camps guitar. It was easy to play, and I and I I love how it resonated, and 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 um, and I got it. And it's not not such a expensive guitar, you know. It's like all solid, all solid wood. It's a Madagascar rosewood back and sides, which is it's a it's a beautiful uh, wood, um, like a Spanish cedar um, uh, neck, ebony fingerboard and European spruce top. So it's like amazing combination, uh, the combination that I like the most for, for, for classical guitars, um, all solid and, uh, and affordable. A guitar like this, um, it's around 2,000 euros, uh, maybe 2.5. Um, so it's uh, compared to like a 10,000 euro Luthier guitar, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a good deal. Yeah. Generally, these are referred to as classical guitars, but the real name for them is Spanish guitars. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's um, that's where all you know started. Um, and when the the guitar came to America, um, North America and South America, you know, they were calling guitar español Spanish guitar here. So uh, even before being called classical guitar, it was called the Spanish guitar. Hmm. Um, what strings do you like to use? Uh, I've oh. found that on, on classical guitars, and I've never really owned a good one, but uh, I have a, a couple little ones that I use occasionally, and I'm always wondering, like, is there a big difference? And there are some very expensive string sets, so what, what do you like to use? 
Um, I like to use Diadario um, um, strings, um, either heavy set or extra heavy. Um, depends on the occasion. Um, this uh, set of strings are um, Diadario's extra heavy. Um, but for some uh, situations, the, the heavy is great, you know. The extra heavy, just like, it's a little harder to play, but uh, but it, it, it's louder and uh, the intonation is, uh, it's, it's better. It stays in tune uh, 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 longer. Nice. All right, well, why don't you uh, play us something? I'm very sure. excited to hear it. Sure. <laughs> By the way, um, this guitar has a pickup. It has a Barbera pickup, a Barbera, uh, uh, it's called Barbera Soloist. It's made in Staten Island, and it's one of the best acoustic guitar pickups that exist. I, I, I love this, uh, this pickup. It gives like a very um, natural classical uh, uh, guitar sound. And I use a small AER amplifier, which is like a, a acoustic guitar amplifier, acoustic instrument amplifier. So um, right now it's um, it's going through the amp, so it has a little bit of reverb, a little bit of amplification, but I can show the difference afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me what song that is. I I know the song. I can't. Oh, that's uh that's uh she's a woman by the Beatles. Of course. Yeah. Um, I was in well, my head and I was like, what is that song? What is that song? <laughs> um, like a like a bluesy bluesy Brazilian version of uh, she's a woman. Well, what I thought was really uh, great about it, if, besides the beautiful arrangement that you made there, is that it was. Going back to talking about ethnomusicology, uh -huh. uh, I heard a Brazilian style, I heard jazz style, I heard some uh, country blues in there, definitely, and, and uh, a little, a little bit of maybe even Paul Simon in there. That was great. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, Gary, uh, my influences are not only Brazilian music. I um, and let's say not only Brazilian songwriting, because I um, I love songwriting. I love songwriting as much 
as I like, um, you know, jazz and instrumental music. So one of my main influences in classical guitar playing is uh, Kenny Rankin, who's a brilliant, uh, was a brilliant songwriter and played guitar beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. Uh, you know, Willie Nelson, uh, Chad Atkins, who else? Uh, um, Leonard Cohen, Nick Drake, they, they all play classical guitar. Or even the the um, the folk singer Melanie from the oh, from yeah. the 60s, 70s. C Candles in the Rain. I also, yes, when yes, I was a little yes. kid, I, I loved her song, uh, Lay yeah. Down. I had that I, you know, 45. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. So uh, they all play the classical guitar. And even like Peter, Poe, and Mary, one played um, steel string guitar, the other played classical guitar. So um, although it's not really seen much in, in popular mu pop music and rock, uh, the classical guitar is there. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, um, it's present. And I like how, um, how you, how, you don't play classical music with the classical guitar. You know, you can play all styles. Uh, uh, when I was on the road with, with Angelique, I, I was mostly like bringing a little bit of, of Brazilian influence, but we were playing, you know, West African and funk. I mean, if you, if you want, I can, I can show you like a couple of things that we were playing with, with the classical guitar, like grooves like... Uh, um, like that uh, or or um, this is more funk oriented but it could be like something more um, West African like a like in six eight like a uh percussive and, and harmonic. Uh, so it, it blends well, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful instrument. But when you play with a band with a lot of percussion and electric bass and drums, it has to be amplified. So um, at times I played, um, you know, like a real uh, classical guitar with a pickup. But sometimes you need a little bit extra than that. You need like a like a solid body classical with uh, uh, with zero feedback. <laughs> uh, and here is the unplugged sound, totally acoustic sound. Amazing, man. Well, thanks so much. I uh, love, love hearing you play. And uh, um, I'm, I had never heard of this brand of guitar before, and I've been looking at uh -huh. uh, their website. They make some beautiful instruments, as you yeah. said. Yeah. So you grew up in Brazil, and you grew up, I'm sure, listening to Brazilian music, obviously. And uh, yeah. who were some of your influences, and then what led you to jazz and then on to the U.S. to pursue guitar? Um, yeah, I, I grew up in São Paulo, in Brazil, and um, since a very uh, young age, like listening to the music that my parents were listening, which uh, were, um, you know, Brazilian music mixed with, with some jazz and some uh, big band music, and then my older brother listening to some rock, um, I was influenced by, by everything, you know. But in terms of uh, Brazilian music, uh, I was uh, influenced by the Brazilian songwriters, you know, people like Gilberto Gil, Caetano Veloso, uh, João Bosco, Chico Buarque, Javan. I was heavily influenced by them. I would say more than um, the precursors of the Brazilian popular music uh, um, style. 
And then I uh, got into more into jazz, into playing electric guitar as well. And uh, to make a long story short, everything ended when I um, went to Berkeley to study music. And then after Berkeley, moved to New York and, and continue my trajectory into the music world. And what was your first big break on guitar? Um, I would say my first big break was um, right after I moved to New York, uh, 1998, I started playing with Angelique Kijo, the West African uh, pop star. Um, started playing nylon string guitar in, um, in a mix format that it was like, a little bit West African and a little bit, a little bit Brazilian because right at that time she was putting together a project called Black Ivory Soul, which was exactly uh, the bridge between Brazil and uh, and Bahia, between uh, Benin and Bahia. Oh. Nice. So before we before I have you play a little bit, you were telling me that you're getting a degree right now in ethnomusicology, which is something I'm really interested in hearing about. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, well, this actually started a long time ago uh, with Angelique. Uh, and I started touring a lot. Uh, we started going to many different parts of the world, different countries. Uh, been to Africa, been to Asia, Europe, South America. Um, and I started getting curious about uh, the music of all those places, you know, getting to know people, getting to share the stage with lots of them, um, jamming with them like on and off stage. You know, whenever I had time, I, I would check out music from, from uh, uh, the places where we were uh, touring. So I always had that in mind, like, wow, how wonderful it would be to, you know, Put this together in a, in a, in a form of like a, a degree or something, and then um, two years ago I decided to apply uh, to an ethnomusic college PhD, and um, and I I started doing um, I'm doing a PhD at uh, Stony Brook in ethnomusicology and uh, and it's it's great I mean researching um, women who build classical guitars so. Um, yeah. Nice. Um, looking forward to uh, hearing your uh, your dissertations on that. Yeah, it's still it's still like uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm at least four years from it. So <laughs> <laughs> it takes time, you know. Like uh, it's a it's a long journey, but um, but yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, uh, we'll we'll revisit you in four years when you have your PhD in ethnomusicology. Wow, that's a, that that would be great. <laughs> but uh, but uh, um, I'm glad that I uh, I was able to uh, to uh, participate, and uh, it's such an honor. Thank you so much, Gary. Oh, thank you, man. I hope thank to you, see man. you soon. I hope to see you play in person one of these days. Me too. Again. Me too. Let's hope this uh, you know all the the vaccination goes well, and uh, we are back in uh, into into touring business soon. Yes, please. Great. All right. See you, man. See you. Well, that was amazing to hear that and, and how versatile the Spanish guitar is. Play all kinds of music on it, not just classical or um, Spanish or Brazilian. It goes all over the map, uh, as most of you know. No revelation there. But fun to hear him play. And uh, check back in the next couple of days for another episode of Let's Hear It. <laughs>